This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwa arcade parts. Hello cave dwellers and welcome into the cave with some old friends. We've got a VCR here, a video cassette recorder, a VHS one no less. And it's not so that we can watch Titanic together and have you paint me like one of your French girls. No, it's because of Sega. Sega, a company with an illustrious gaming history. Many of those driving games such as Virtua Racer, Sega Rally, Outrun of course, and who could forget the Sega Taiko collaboration, Sega Video Driver. Ready? All right then, let's go cruising with these totally awesome wheels. Yes, Sega's Video Driver, also known as Family Driver in Japan, is a complete gaming system, comprising of a VHS-based game and the hardware on which to play it. It first appeared in 1988, the same year as the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis was released in Japan, and this UK version was distributed by Taiko, hence the inclusion of their name on the box. And if this young man's reaction is anything to go by, then we're in for a good time. Using video formats was not a new idea of course, games such as 1985's Road Blaster was a full motion video driving game which utilised the Laserdisc format, but a Laserdisc has a distinct advantage over videotape, in that it can jump to any part of the disc to play a clip. So how do you go about making the very linear format that is tape based video into an interactive experience? Maybe the contents here will show us. California Chase is the included game tape in this UK version. Other titles include Road Race and Police Pursuit also bundled in some regions. And in Japan you could buy this additional tape and car, complete with surfboard. Pretty neat. We also find some kind of framework with suction pads, a steering wheel essential for that real driving excitement experience, and the meat of the setup, the base and sensor bar. It's probably best not to use the included original battery though but thankfully leakage is contained within the battery nappy. Just like a real race car, we clip on our steering wheel and reset the score ready to play. The score decreases with penalties, so the goal is to keep it as close to 100 as possible. We then use the mounts to position the sensor about a quarter of a way up the screen for reasons which will become clear. and then we mount the model Porsche car ready to play, which is when I realised the set is actually missing the car, but as the car is purely aesthetic, it was quickly resolved with a quick trip to the local charity shop. But then we hit a more serious problem, and I'm glad we did in a way because it means you get to see a little more about how this works. With the batteries installed there was no movement coming from the device and the problem was simply a cable to the DC motor that needed resoldering and then it all came back to life. A sensor here is mounted on the front of the bar facing the TV and it travels from left to right as a passenger on this carriage. The carriage is powered by our little DC motor up and down the track according to our left or right steering input and that is the makeup of this real driving experience, the saddest train set you've ever owned. But let's reserve judgement until we've taken our exotic supercar here for a spin on the California Chase. Start the engine. Rev it up. Okay now. Let's whoa, go! Whoa, whoa, who's that? Okay, follow that car! Real video, speech, a thumping soundtrack. Everything we wanted from a video game in 1988, right? Watch out, he's getting away! Well, except for maybe gameplay, the game itself is really limited to the part of the screen obscured by the bar. White blocks, which are a part of the video, slide around here representing obstacles in the game. If that sensor we saw earlier detects a white block, then your score goes down, so our goal is to stay in the black. Stay in the lane. Keep an eye on him now. Look out for the, the footage is quite hilarious, never quite explaining why we're chasing the black car, 
who's probably terrified thinking the 1971 thriller Jewel is unfolding and a crazy trucker is out to kill him. Funnier still is the movie's adherence to the law. During our chase, we're overtaken by pickup trucks, people carriers, and even a cyclist, as the law-abiding racers transform from city to country scenes as if by magic. He's picking up speed, but we can pass him. Step on it. All right. Our VHS delivers a full six minutes of intense driving action, which will of course play on regardless of your actions unless you press stop on the VCR. Hey, there he is again. Come on, get him. And finally, you will reach your goal, which as it turns out, was a trip to the seaside all along. And our final score rates our exotic dumpster as a speedster. Not bad for a first attempt. So what's my verdict on the Sega video driver? Well, I think you've guessed by now, VHS videos are just not suitable for video gaming. Laserdiscs just about scrape through with the level of interactivity they can offer. But VHS, it's just a completely linear experience. And the connection between our truck here and what's happening on the screen is so minimal it's laughable to call it a game. You'd get more gameplay out of a 1970s game of Pong. But it's not all bad. I did find some reuse for this. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. Don't listen to her, Jack. Where are you? Get in my truck. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider supporting the channel using the links in the description, visit monsterjoysticks.com forward slash RMC, or simply subscribe and come back for more soon.